Pyruvate decarboxylation is a big word, but it's the second step within cellular respiration. This step is also known as the PrEP step. The inputs for this step are two pyruvate molecules that we're going to get from glycolysis. Remember that each one of these pyruvate molecules is going to have three carbons. The outputs for this step are going to be two acetyl-CoA molecules that have two carbons, two CO2 molecules that each are going to have a carbon, and two NADH molecules. Before this step can occur, pyruvate's going to make its way into the mitochondrial matrix. It's going to do this by going through membrane proteins within the inner and outer membrane of the mitochondria. There's going to be a specific reaction that occurs that changes this pyruvate molecule into the acetyl-CoA. I'm not going to go into the specific details of that reaction, but I'm going to note that this reaction occurs twice. That's because each of these pyruvate molecules will go through this reaction because we have two pyruvates from glycolysis. One of these NAD molecules is going to oxidize pyruvate, which means it's going to take away one of its electrons. When NAD takes this electron, it's also going to bind with a hydrogen ion to form NADH. CO2 is also going to be produced in this step, which means we're going to lose a carbon when going from pyruvate, which is three carbons, to acetyl-CoA, which is only two. One third of the carbon dioxide that you breathe out is going to be from this step. Remember that we started with six carbons in the original glucose molecule. We're going to lose two of those carbons within this step, which means two out of the six carbons here are going to be lost in the form of CO2, which means one third of your carbon dioxide is produced at this step. The acetyl-CoA molecule there at the end is going to go on to the next step, which is called the Krebs cycle. I'm going to make a specific video about the coenzyme A, but basically this helps it get into the next process, which again is the Krebs cycle.